Here's your host. He's like a script kitty of comedy. Someone else writes the jokes. He just delivers them poorly. Paul Asadorian. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Paul.com Security Weekly. This is episode 321. Yeah, so it's good to be here. My headphones sound weird. I don't what? know why that is. No, I think it's just you. It's just you. <laughs> just me. Yep. I just got an uh, IM from uh, our uh, executive producer, Mike. Yes. New sponsor, the APT. <laughs> Drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of hilarious things going on surrounding that. Yeah. Well, it's Thursday, February 21st. I want to welcome everyone to Paul.com Security Weekly. We've got a fantastic show for you this evening, or whenever you happen to be listening to the show. With me, of course, is none other than Mr. Larry Pesce. Yay! And we're drinking some good beer. Yeah. My wife got me a um, uh, beer, beer of the, of the month. month club. That's yeah. good stuff. So I got like the the papers that, that tell you about all the different kinds of beer Dude, and stuff. You get, you get the papers. I got the papers. Sweet. You get the stuff. I got the papers. Um, so Larry and I are drinking salmon fly honey rye. I won't read the whole thing, but maybe during one of the breaks. Who's we'll, the brewery? Madison we'll River Brewing. Company. It's a Madison River Brewing Company, which is located in one of the world's hottest travel destinations for fly fishermen, um, in Montana. Nice. So. Fun stuff happening there. It's good. It's good beer. It is it's good beer. Register for offensive countermeasures: the art of active defense in Black Hat Europe. Sands 2013 in Orlando and Sands Fire Washington D.C. The links to register for all of those classes. So there's three of them coming up. Whether you're in Europe, whether you're near Orlando, or just want to go to Orlando to see Mickey, or you want to go to Washington D.C. Or in- if you want to go to Orlando and do both. Go see Mickey then, go to training. That's right. Or go to training then, see Mickey. That's what we're doing. The links to, well, attend the classes, not necessarily see Mickey, are in the show notes. Um, come to B-Sides Rhode Island, a one-day conference on June 15th. Tickets are on sale now. We switched over to WePay.com. So that link is in the show notes, so you can go buy tickets. Please go buy your tickets today. Uh, feature presentations are from Josh Wright, Kevin Finisterre. Katie Rodson and Mike Murray, Bruce Potter, Joe McRae, Ron Gula, Ben Jackson, Dave Mater, and the entire Paul.com crew. The Stogie Geek Show. Oh, right after this, it's going to be awesome. We're going to the Havana Smoke Show, or Havana Cigar Club, which is uh, just down the street from here. And we're going to broadcast live. There's a whole event. We're going to have a live audience. It's going to be fun. Do you have your audio on? Yeah, the, I do. I like, was trying to. Because all I hear is tick it, tick it, tick it. I'm like, tick it, tick it, tick it. We shouldn't do that ever. <laughs> uh, I do. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta mute it. Hold on. I gotta talk, talk about something. Uh, okay, I'll talk about something. Hey, uh, I'm still looking for a job. <laughs> uh, no, it's things are. There you go. Thing, about. I, I am available for hire. I'm looking for full time employment without relocation. Um, willing to travel. To a certain point, yeah, of course, I'm looking down at my computer doing, you know, like, the total antisocial thing, right? Yeah, I'm working. Yeah, I'm really dedicated. Um, yeah, but no, I'm uh, looking for a job, um, and uh, I've been on a bunch of interviews, so things are going well. There's uh, The one thing I will report back, that from this job hunt, if you can't find a job in this entry industry, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> um, there are a lot of, lot jobs, of jobs out there. Out there. A lot of jobs. There may not be a lot of uh, entry level stuff, but I still would might argue there's probably a lot of entry level stuff too. Um, no, I would agree. The uh, percentage of entry level stuff is much lower. Yeah, much lower than some of the the mid to senior stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm still looking and uh, willing to pursue a uh, bunch of opportunities because uh, you never know. Um, all of the current ones that I'm faced with might not work out. So let's go. You know, I I have a lot of jobs here around the house. Um, I don't do rim jobs. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we washed the floor with baking soda, and to make a long story short, we used too much baking soda. <laughs> so I was I was doing a lot of mop on the floor. And mop Shan- on the floor. Yeah. Shannon was in the kitchen. I'm like, I mop the floor. My name is Jose. I mop the floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's just one of my many jobs around here. Actually, in the house. You, you, I'm the garbage man. I'm the. You, you know, you know what your name is there. Man. What's that, Manuel? Manuel? Manuel Labor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Manuel Labor. Manuel Labor. Oh, boy. All right. Let's uh, bring on... <coughs> excuse me. Let's bring in our next... Our very first special guest who is no stranger to the show. 
or to podcasting or to wearing tight pants. Uh, Adrian Crenshaw, also known as Iron Geek, has worked in the IT industry for the last 15 years. He runs the information security website IronGeek.com, which specializes in videos and articles that illustrate how to use various pen testing and security tools. He does the the cert chase for a while, but stopped once he had to start paying for the tests himself. He's currently working on a master's in security informatics and is also one of the co-founders of DerbyCon. Welcome, Adrian, to the show. Thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, it's nice to actually sit down with you and have a, a casual conversation. I think the times in the past we brought you on the show, it's been very uh, topical. It's been surrounded on specific projects, maybe. Um, but we're going to kick back and just you know, kind of ask you how you got your start in information security. Well, I really started poking around at a local paper mill, trying to figure out what was going on, um, getting into systems. My brother had an account on the system, so I'd get on there and uh, go to forums and poke around. And uh, it slowly started building up from there. I decided I liked coming better than I did electronics at the time. So I've since gone back and done some more electronics. And uh, while I was poking around, I'd do things like, wow, this uh, login system is incredibly easy. I can write this in Power Basic. No, no issues whatsoever. This tells you how long ago this was. I'm talking about Power and Turbo Basic. So it was a Nobel login screen. I was like, hmm, well, I can emulate this. So write my own little uh, password catcher that sits there and goes, oh, you entered the wrong password. Go ahead and enter it again, then takes you to the correct login prompt. Doing things like that, poking around the network. Sometimes I'd like do user lists and say, huh, this user account exists. Looks like a service account. I wonder if I could log into it. They're supposed to have it station restricted in Novell, and they didn't. Like I said, this tells you how long ago this was when I'm talking about Novell. But I always enjoyed like, uh, playing with systems, trying to figure out how to get into things I shouldn't. So it kind of uh, started from there and uh, built up. Then uh, sometime in... Uh, 2000, uh, well, actually, in the late 90s, early 2000s, I read a book, Hacking Exposed. Started playing around with more techniques, really enjoyed it. I don't read the Hacking Exposed books right now. A lot of times they rehash the same material over and over again and don't update between uh, editions. But at least at the time, it was one of the few books out there, it seemed, of that variety. And so that fascinated me. I started doing more research. I started doing presentations at the local campus. Uh, and then... Uh, got me a sharp resource and started posting all sorts of stuff about how to get various uh, Debian-based, sorry, ARM-based uh, Debian distribution tools on it. Oh, yeah. I remember that, actually. <laughs> oh, and also back in the day, I started listening to a ton of uh, old hacker podcasts. Like ben Rev Radio was one of my favorites. Yeah, me too. Yay. Me too. Um... So, at some point, you started um, IronGeek.com. Tell us about how that came about. Well, uh, originally, I started as part of my uh, campus uh, website, which came to bite me in the ass later on. <laughs> Wait, because <laughs> of the little tagline that you used to use? Oh, what? Uh, lifting dumbbells in the gym, supporting them at work? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. No, no one complained about that. No, no. I, I had an <laughs> issue where I was doing research for a talk. I was going to do on printer security, and I had some previous issues. But, uh, I, I didn't, wasn't in well with the admins. I put up a chat server on a printer where people could like, send messages to the LCD screen. Oh, and it would show the world what was on there. And so people were chatting back and forth across the world, or at least across the country, you know, via this. Via this. Well, it got put on Dig. <gasps> and at the time, I got a lot of traffic. So I put up a video of what it was doing to prove yeah, it did, it did work and took it down. Well, I didn't watch the video as close as I should have. It had various cuss words and racial slurs in it. <sighs> and next, next thing I know, I'm hacking network printers. I'm getting in all sorts of trouble. Uh, let's see, the HR person is, uh, well, like most HR people, not necessarily very knowledgeable. Not compared negatively to the two people who get paid more than me that couldn't do what I could do. Uh, wouldn't listen to much of what, anything I was saying. The uh, guy who's in charge of the IT department, besides having a doctorate, would say silly things like, this is an exact quote. Additionally, Mr. Quinshaw's personal website, housed on university resources, is a compendium of links to known computer hacker websites, hacker toolkits, and other hacker resources. And this is one of his points he used to take away various network access rights of mine, as well as, in the process of doing this, one of the servers I used for um, showing what was going on, he just, hey, let's take that down, without ever asking what exactly that server did. So he crippled more university resources in his <laughs> than you did. terrible version of incident response than I did. I caused a bunch of network traffic and some people to maybe get offended if they saw some words in the video unintentionally. 
he actually took down equipment and library resources by doing what he did. Uh, there are some wow. moronic people get put in charge of things, and some people, sometimes incident response can actually cause more damage than the uh, incident people are responding to. So your, your website Inci was, Incident uh, response, <coughs> you're doing it wrong. Your website yep. was really just uh, a way for you to share the information that you were uh, research researching. Yeah. Well, I, I, but I largely at that point even moved it away. I, after I started, um, that was kind of a sidetrack, sorry. Uh, but I saw this tool uh, back in the early 2000s called Cam Studio, and I was like, wow, why isn't anybody making like hacker vids or how to use various tools with this? So I started making little videos about um, how to do this and that with tools like um, InMap and EdaCap and posting them. And uh, one friend came to another, and eventually I ended up getting a sharp Zorus because I wanted to play around with uh, mobile hacking. And I got enough traffic coming into my sharp Zorus post on the university website. I was like, I oh, screwed. I'll buy my own domain and host it there instead. And that's how I got, eat dot com got started. And then I slowly started building on from there. Uh, started putting up any kind of article I wanted to write. Uh, started doing more and more videos, uh, videoing the talks I did myself. Then eventually. I started recording talks at various conferences I went to. I, like, I think actually Louisville Infospec 2008 was probably the first con I ever recorded other people's talks at. And uh, actually, I think John Strand was there. I'm yeah. So I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that, was a, that was the 2008 one, yeah. Um, That's the one I wasn't, I, started, I wasn't at that one. Uh, I, Adrian, yeah, yeah, I, I wanna, Adrian, I want to go back about. to um, the printer stuff. Because oh, that's yeah. that's when you went to someone who was relatively unknown to me to being my hero overnight, because I was looking oh, okay. into uh, I was probably doing a whole bunch of uh, like Nmap Nessus scans of the network, you know, writing custom scripts. You wasted a lot of paper, didn't you? I did, I did, and then I so I ended up writing some of my own stuff and researching the vulnerabilities. And your site would always come back as uh, a resource, and I read through all of your articles on printer hacking, probably two or three times over. Um, and it was very inspirational to me to try and address the printer security issue at the time. So how has the vulnerabilities that we were playing with, you know, way back in, in 2004... Five, uh, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> probably. How have those changed from today? As far as I can tell, uh, not at all. I think I've seen a few places where they've started enabling at least self-signed suits, SSH, uh, for you know, accessing the... Uh, admin panel, but then most people don't change the password on the admin panel on the printer anyway, so and also, even those, pro those files we were looking at back in uh, the mid-2000s, a lot of those printers are still out there, because yeah. if a printer's still printing, people ain't replacing it. Yep. Uh, I think my buddy, uh, Jeremy Drew, and the guy who's in charge of uh, Matilda Day right now, uh, he was thinking of testing out a newer printer, and some of the same things would be working on it. So as far as I can tell, they really haven't upgraded a whole lot. I mean, there's some new automated tools, like a Daryl Highlands put out one card, I think it's Praetor, um, that will suck off various information. That didn't sound right. Suck down various information from <laughs> printers. Uh, right like, apparently, some types of printers have different uh, tools on them. Um, they need to be sucked down. They require domain access, and they'll actually have the password embedded in the printer. Um, and he's also found a way of replacing the particular version of either, I think, Linux or uh, BSD on certain printers with your own image and doing all sorts of other research like that. I've been trying to figure out a good way of automating the, um, automating the download of uh, stored documents off of Savin printers. Unfortunately, uh. I haven't found a good automated way of doing it. Regular spiders don't work because it's all JavaScript based and also the incredibly, um, the night's actually robust. Printers are pretty non-robust. They'll fall over pretty easy. And I've screwed up a bunch of the document statements on uh, all sorts of Rico Savin's trying to write my own script for sucking those down. I hate it when mm. that happens. <clears throat> so, are, are still a lot of the problems, uh, Adrian, uh, based on PJL, the the uh, port ninety one hundred Jet Direct port. Well, the only real fun I ever had of that was uh, there was some storage things which I haven't looked into. You could document using PJL commands. Yeah, uh, a lot of though know, I had fun with was just you know the tri silly trivial uh, changing the LED people. Yeah. And you said you created a, a chat server based on changing the uh, LCD on the printer? Yeah, we had that and a webcam. Uh, and that's how people would chat back and forth. Yeah, I remember now. Yes, 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 yes. That's pretty cool. Um, so what were you looking into after the printer stuff? 
Do you remember what was... Because uh, you did the printer stuff for a while and uh, greatly appreciative of that. What was uh, what came next? Wasn't it RDP? Oh, oh, was that RDP? RDP? I mean, I made all sorts of little scripts that, for my own use that I put out on my website that was useful to people. Like, um, uh, Kane has this great functionality for older versions of RDP to man in the middle of it and be able to get all the keystrokes out. But unfortunately, it puts it in a format where you see the keystroke and a bunch of information about it. You see a keystroke and a bunch of information about it. And you couldn't really pass it out for passwords and so forth. So I wrote a quick tool in order it that passes them and throws out a nice uh, log for you. Uh, I also started messing around with uh, bootable CDs of various types, Windows-based ones, so you can run various Windows tools from bootable CDs. So I was basically taking other people's work, giving them credit, of course, and trying to write better documentation. Because there's a lot of people uh, out there who are much better coders than I am, but a lot of good coders do not necessarily know how to write a document that will help other people learn how to use their tool. Awesome. I'm trying to think of all the other uh, odds and ends I've been doing over the years. Um, <sighs> the Tinsy project was a lot of fun. Yeah, tell the, us uh, a, little, a little more about that. That was, uh, that was fucked, right? PH. Yeah, programmable hit USB keyboard dongle. <clears throat> Yes. The, the origin of that is I gave a, a talk on uh, skitty baiting at um, the Fireside ShmooCon 2010. That was the one, thing, that was the drunkest I've ever been in my life was at that particular conference, and Larry can attest to this. Yes, yes, Wait, I can. Wait, drunker I than you were that time at ShmooCon? I have video. No, that was the time at ShmooCon. Oh, that was the time at ShmooCon. Yes. This one time at ShmooCon. Um, what happened? Right. ShmooCon unfortunately doesn't stay there. I showed up with a bottle of Applejack. Nick showed up with a bottle of Chartreuse. We traded, and that's about the last thing I remember that night. There was a bottle anyway, of Jim Beam floating around that night, too. More likely. And I think that was probably also the drunkest I have also been, because that was the first year that Darren went, and I handed him 20 bucks and said, go get me something to drink and get yourself something, too. And he came back with Long Island iced teas. Oh, yeah. And he did that oh. more than once. Oof. Like I three imagine, or four you, times. You, how many... Like Twenty bucks in DC for drinks at a hotel. I had to imagine you wouldn't be able to get too many. Yeah, I don't remember how much money. I uh, whatever. I gave him money and said, "Go get drinks." So I well, see the pictures and video. I I I think I can put them on. Let me see if I can. Let's find get them. that. All right, all right, that's enough. That's okay. Enough. Yep. Anyway, earlier that <laughs> night on. I was giving my uh, fire talk, and then I was given a gift by uh, the people who were running it. No, I think Greg's is the one that handed it to me. This little phantom uh, keystroker is what it was called. It did like gags, like turn caps lock on and off, and messing with people in various ways. So it's like, yeah. wow, this, this is cool. If I could program this, this would be a way of getting around the whole U3 issue. I happened to see um, Darren from Hack5 that I mentioned to him, and he said something about, oh, yeah, me and Robin have a project kind of going on like that. And we talked a little bit back and forth. And I was, wait, I was hoping to get some hardware soon, but I got impatient. I found something. Um, oh, into Micah saying, I've been drunker. No, I don't know if I have. If I have. <laughs> anyway, I started thinking, what if I could program these things? So I started looking around for hardware. And uh, another, a different Paul enti entirely uh, has designed this piece of hardware called a Tensi, which is essentially you can be programmed using either straight C, I think assembly, and uh, the Arduino environment that will send keystrokes to act as a USB HID. So I started wrestling around with various techniques of using that as a tax device and publishing that information. And people seem to uh, dig that a whole lot. Um, and then a bunch of other little projects I've done for school since then. Like, I was trying to mess around with homoglyph attacks on browsers before I realized that pretty much that problem has largely been fixed. But hopefully I can play around with that a little bit more and uh, find other play ways of impersonating people. Like, I was um, on some forums once impersonating people's login names at, by using Unicode characters to be able to log in as an account that looks like them, but it's not. Oh, so, Adrian, um, and then you started uh, recording videos. You touched on that briefly already. So... Uh, can you just take us briefly through the process? I mean, try not to go into all the gritty details. I know you do a talk on this, but how you actually record and then publish those videos of all the conferences because it's astonishing the way you're able to do that. All right. Well, I originally started out just um, uh, filming one sc one camera screen in person. Uh, eventually, I started... Um, well, I think I started bitching at Skydog about getting certain videos out faster, and he's like, here, you do it. And he hands me the DVDs, so I rip them all and post them. Next time I'm at one of his conferences, I'm actually sitting there ripping DVDs at the same time. That's a pain, and you don't get the kind of quality that you want. So I uh, started looking around, and I found out about this, this uh, scripting language called AVI Synth, which allows you to composite videos. So I started writing scripts, and uh, at a couple of talks I did, and eventually at uh, Skydog's AutoZone, 
we used his video rig and used my scripts to be able to do the whole picture in a picture, kind of like they do at DEF CON, but do it cheap. Huh. Uh, over time, that system's uh, gotten better and better, and I have a slightly older video on how to do this at, um, I think it was Outer Zone 2011. But nowadays, I use this uh, thing from Elgato, this HDMI capture rig. I have a VGA to HDMI adapter. I use that for capturing the slides. I have a Canon high-def camcorder that I put on the person, and uh, any more since Hackathon since I've been um, putting up a all right, I put up something on the screen so I can get a sync signal. Like, tell them move slide forward, move slide back. But that it was always so hit and miss. So now I start using this um, clock that I put up on the screen. I face my camera at the screen. I start recording the screen also. And I have this little clock at the bottom that's running down the number of 25ths of a second since midnight. So I can cut the videos exactly by just editing my script a little bit, put the person's name in it, and render it out using uh, AVI Sense. Mostly I use AVI, well, AVI Sense and... Um, Virtual Dub. The main reason I use Virtual Dub, it's, it's one of the most stable video tools out there. It'd be nice to output more formats, but I don't know how much you mess with video tools, but uh, they'll crash at the, at the drop of a hat. Yeah, <laughs> yes, they're very they finicky. <clears throat> and then I start uh, uploading to YouTube and also archive.org, which reminds me I still need to get the uh, Shmoocon Firesides up for, on archive.org. I haven't done that yet. I'm going to have to go by the paper mill to get some more bandwidth to do it. <laughs> well, no, you, um, you run on the uh, on a Windows platform to do all this, right? Yeah, that's all Windows platform for that. I haven't messed around enough with the video tools on the uh, Linux platform. Th there, was, um, there was a tool called Composite Live. I'm trying to think of what it was called now. <laughs> but it was written in Java, and it was too slow for me to do this stuff <laughs> yep. that I want to do in the quality I wanted to do it. So I'm still... Com uh, p compositing it after the talk's over. Nice, nice. Nice, and you, Adrian, you are incredibly fast on getting the videos recorded and posted. Well, I try to do some prep work ahead of time, like um, to get the website up, I usually copy various parts of, um, well, various pieces of information, the person's name and all that. I'll pre-generate photos for the videos to have the scripts sitting there ready to go, so I just have to cut and, copy and paste some things. So I try to do a lot of pre-work, and then during the time, you see me with an earbud in syncing video in the uh, back of the hall. Nice. That's awesome. <clears throat> I try to make it faster by doing multi-threading, but um, AVI sense multi-threading capability is uh, not exactly stable. So now, uh, are people are inviting you to conferences just to do the video? I've got a few invites. Um, most the other ones I've been doing it, I've been, doing, I've been uh, going to as an attendee or a speaker for a while. So, there's only a few I've been invited to solely because I could record. Uh, actually, not invited if I've been any of those. Of those ones I've, been sp I've spoken also. Um, I think the first one that's really happened might have been not a con last year. So, I do get people asking me about it. And asking me if I charge, and my thing is, just get me a room, get me a way of getting it cheap, not post the videos on my website. I'm fine. It's content. And I do make a little money off of it because of um, assets revenue. I'll put them all up to archive.org later on so people who don't see any of that can just the videos down archive.org and save them to the hard drive. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, we're looking to, uh, hopefully, if the budget allows, bring Adrian down to B-Side, Rhode Island to, uh, to do the talks now, too. So. I can clear up my boss. I'm cool. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You'll be hearing more from us on that, I promise. Um, let's see. So, uh, what led to, so you were one of the founders of DerbyCon, is that correct? Yep. So, what led to that idea? Um, so yeah. <laughs> That was the night of wine and chicken, I think. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, that, no. Was, that was a different night that was the wine and chicken. But I, I think I was also um, inebriated that night where I didn't come out to uh, hang out with uh, Martin and Dave. Uh, but what happened was we ended up wanting to do this Metasploit class. I'd been teaching classes for the local ISSA for a bit. These free classes we put on, it'd be uh, hours, five hours long. And I wanted to do one on Metasploit, but I didn't have all the background I needed for that. Well, I'd recently gotten to know Dave after he came to uh, the Louisville InfoSec 2009 and uh, him and his team, which included Martin and a few other people, decimated my uh, Capture the Flag event. Yeah, I remember and including, that. Including decimating <laughs> my own laptop before Dave actually looked up the, uh, the scope. Don't. I, had a, I, had a, I didn't have my firewall up, and I had a vulnerability that didn't have a patch for it yet. 
I think that was the SMB2 vulnerability from a few years ago. I remember that. I was there when Dave did that. Yeah, he came up and apologized. It was adorable. Yeah, he, <laughs> anyway, uh, it was hogs all around. I, 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 I wanted to put up on his Metasploit class. I was like, well, who am I going to invite? Well, Dave and Martin are obvious ones. I knew a couple of other people like Ken and Elliot would be interested. So we ended up putting together this class. But the person, someone was supposed to be from actually watching the email uh, address where people registered. No one was watching it. So all of a sudden we had like 70 freaking people show up for this uh, charity class we put on <laughs> for uh, Hackers for Charity. Well, we started thinking, I'm not sure who said it first. It may have been uh, Martin and Dave the previous night when they were out dinner. If we can get this many people in Louisville for this little one-day class, can we put on a HackerCon? And so we wanted to do uh, DerbyCon 2010. Couldn't get space that fast. But we started putting things together and ended up doing DerbyCon 2011, which was the first one. And it came off, I think, incredibly well. Luckily, Dave knows everybody. Uh, Martin has a lot of experience as far as uh, putting on uh, large productions. I think he used to work in various uh, like sound engineering or used to work for like um, concert promoters. I'm not sure what his background is, but it's in, it is, does involve rigging stages and so forth. But uh, Nick is, uh, knows a lot of people also, and is our security guy, and he knows a lot of people who have worked other conferences. So we get a lot of goons from DEF CON and uh, workers from ShmooCon who also come and act as jockeys for us. And, of course, Aaron's there to keep us all organized. So we've got a lot of people who, while this might be their first con of their own, they've worked at other cons, and we bring in a lot of uh, staff from other cons to help out. So I think that's one of the reasons it came off so good these last two years. That's great. Yeah, we all definitely look forward to DerbyCon uh, every year. So far, I, I have as a rule, that's the only con I'm going in a year for sure. Any other con, uh, I have to check. Yeah, I agree I'm with not that committing call. to. I'm in the same boat. Speaking of oh. which, did you introduce Carlos when we first started? I don't think so. Nope. Jesus. Jeez. You I'm already do- used to it. <laughs> Paul <laughs> hates me. I'm, uh, everybody knows it's this. Steve, Steve's hatred for you, which stemmed from Dave's hatred for you, has now stemmed into yeah. my hatred for Carlos, you. Carlos, you're just a second-class citizen, my That's friend. That's right. Well, Carlos, I love you. I know. <laughs> I love you, too, Everyone Carlos. that's introduced, Carlos Perez from Sunny Puerto Rico. See, what we'll do, Carlos, we'll just edit that, and we'll put it at the front of the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) The the beauty of non-linear audio editing. Oh, hell. Uh, Oh, I got to say this since I'm on. Yay, DerbyCon! Since ISD Podcast isn't around to do it anymore. Yes. Yay, DerbyCon. Yay, DerbyCon. All right, uh, Adrian, five questions with Paul.com. Oh, wait, no, wait. Who Who gives more awkward hugs, Jason Street or Dave Kennedy? Dave more often, Jason more awkward. But then again, I see Dave more. Uh, I don't know. Dave's hugs are pretty awkward, though. Yeah. I, his finger was in my bum hole. That's, you know, that's how awkward yeah, it's it gets. It's a little more awkward when you're sitting down and Jason decides to hug you while you're standing up. Yeah. <laughs> that adds like to the a, awkwardness. I'm like a faceful cock. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean. Uh, All right. Adrian, five questions with Paul.com. You ready? Okay. These are just five random questions. You ready? Okay, it doesn't matter because here oh, we go. Not, but I'm going, it doesn't matter, so go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Question one. If you were a serial killer, what would your weapon of choice be? Tomahawk. Three words to describe yourself. Okay, what, one what? word to describe yourself. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, depressive, hairy, and peck. I don't know. <laughs> if, you, if you had to write a book about yourself, what would the title be? Death to all those who oppose me? Nice. <laughs> Stranded on a desert island, which tablet would you take with you if you could only choose one? iPad, Android, or the Surface? Uh, Android. In a popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, would you prefer to go first or second? Apparently, I'm going to get drunk at cons. I go first, so I suppose I must be doing it first. You're doing it right. I, I, can, I can attest to that. You're, you're doing it right. Adrian, thank you very much for appearing on Paul.com. We hope to have you no back problem. sometime soon to talk about all the great stuff that you're always researching. And, of course, we'll see you at DerbyCon. And hopefully B-Sides Rhode Island if all works out. Thanks much, guys. All right. Thanks, Thanks Adrian. Adrian.